สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So a few years ago, I was leafing through m a n g c h i s cookbook, and a recipe caught my eye because it was so unique: a mung bean jelly appetizer called c h o n g p o m u k So further searching led me to a similar Chinese version called l i a n g f e n but instead of being blocks like the Korean ones, they are noodles, which I liked even better. So when our old friend and sponsor Pine Brand asked me to make a recipe that uses mung bean starch, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I've been experimenting with a few versions of the mung bean jelly noodles, and it turned out to be one of the coolest, most satisfying things I have ever made. And It was actually really tasty. So if you want to make it, it's actually super simple. But if you don't want to make it, just sit back and enjoy some very satisfying cooking. You only need two ingredients for this: water and mung bean starch. And if mung bean starch sounds familiar, it's because it's what used to make glass noodles that you might be more familiar with. As mentioned, I'm using Pine Brand, who is our sponsor today, and Pine Brand is the leading brand in Thailand for both mung bean starch and glass noodles. And I always trust that their products are pure, which is very important in this recipe. Let's get started. First, I'm going to heat up about two thirds of our water and bring it to almost a simmer. With the rest of the water, I'm going to dissolve our mung bean starch in it. This is something I learned the hard way. Always dissolve starch in cold liquid before adding it to anything hot, or you get lumps everywhere. Once you see bubbles forming at the bottom of the pot, I'm going to give the starch mixture another stir and then gradually pour it into the water while stirring. Stirring is the name of the game here, and you don't want to stop stirring because otherwise the starch will settle and gel up at the bottom of the pot. This is a very cool process, so I'm showing it in real time here. No cutting, no speeding up, so you can watch it all unfold. At first, you'll notice bits of clear gel start to appear in little blobs, and you might think that something's gone wrong because now there are lumps, but this is all part of the plan. Then, over a span of what feels like just a few seconds, you'll notice the whole thing gel up into a thick white paste. And once it's all thick, you may think it's over, but it's not. The white paste then gradually turns into a translucent paste, little by little, and you keep stirring until eventually the transformation stops. Everything looks evenly translucent, and nothing seems to be changing anymore. That's how you know it's done. And if you stop stirring, it should also be bubbling. Now I'm going to pour it into my mold, which can be any rectangular heat-resistant container, glass, metal, doesn't matter. Smooth the top, and now I'm going to let it sit at room temperature until it's cool. Now, after it's cool, it'll turn from that paste into the solid jelly. Look how cool that is, right? Now, technically, once it's solid, it's ready to be noodled, but you want to refrigerate it because right now, look how bouncy it is, right? And if you try to cut into it or grate it, turn into noodles, it'll just give into your pressure, and it'll just be really difficult to work with. So, refrigerate it for a couple of hours, firm it up. It'll be much easier. So. Here's one that I made yesterday, and see how much more cloudy, how much more white it is compared to one that we freshly made, and that is your sign that this is now fully chilled. Now, the other satisfying part about this is that it just pops right out. There's no need to grease it. There's no need to do anything with it. Now there's going to be water that has come out overnight. That is totally normal. It, it's a gel, but it's unstable. Water is just going to slowly comes out, but it, it's not a problem. Okay. Now here's the part we've all been waiting for. We're going to turn this into noodles using a grater like this. Oh my God! Look at. This toggle. Look how cool these look. Seriously, I can do this all day. Just give me blocks and blocks of this stuff, and I'm just gonna keep grading. How cool is that? And then we just keep going.
I'm gonna stop myself here because I could have kept going all day. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can also try a box grater. It will work. It's just a little bit more awkward because it doesn't have a handle. They do sell liangfen grater made specifically for this job, so that would be your best option. But if you got nothing else, you can just hand cut it with a knife. It'll probably be bigger and not nearly as satisfying as this process, but it'll work. Now, this is technically ready to eat. You can throw this into a nice refreshing salad right away. However, now the noodles are a little bit firm because we put them in the fridge because we needed them to be firm. But for eating, I actually prefer them to be a little bouncier the way they were before. And thank you to the magic of chemistry, the hardening up of the noodles is actually reversible. All we have to do to get our bounce back is blanch the noodles in boiling water and once the noodles heat up, they magically turn from white to translucent. So cool. So many satisfying parts in this recipe. And no, somehow, magically again, they do not turn back into a paste when heated, which is the other really cool part about this stuff. I don't know how that works, but if you do, let us know in the comments. Once the noodles are all translucent, and this just takes a few seconds, they can be drained and then dunked into cold tap water or rinsed under running water to cool down. Look at these! Look how jiggly and clear these are. And now we went through all this trouble because now they're a little bit more elastic, see? And that's really good texture in your mouth when you eat it. Now, if you're wondering, wait a minute, you boiled them to get them bouncy and now you've cooled them down in the water, aren't they gonna just firm back up? Don't worry, they will only firm back up if it's fridge cold. Tap water, cold tap water is not gonna do it. So another magical thing about these noodles. Now that they're ready to go, the best thing to make with these is actually some kind of a noodle salad. And you can use whatever dressings that you like for noodle salad, but I'm gonna stick to a pretty traditional version of the Chinese dish, liang fen, with this simple dressing. Grate or mince a clove of garlic into a mixing bowl and then add soy sauce, I'm using Japanese soy sauce here, rice vinegar, sugar, and toasted sesame oil. And just stir that until the sugar is dissolved. Assembly time. I'm gonna take my very jiggly noodles, pick them up, dab them on a towel to dry off, and then plate them into neat little bundles. Yes, you will feel the urge to jiggle them every time you pick them up. You can just drain them and pile them on, of course, but this makes for a prettier presentation and the water makes it easier to make the bundles. For texture and freshness, I like to add some julienned cucumber and julienned carrots. The dressing gets spooned over the noodles and the part that makes this very pretty is the chili oil or chili crisp. Lauganma style chili crisp is very good on this. A little green onions and some chopped up peanuts for garnish and just look at this beauty. This is very pretty, but in order to eat it, we have to mix everything together. So make sure you stop everybody from eating, get your photograph and then you can mix it. It's so sad to mix it. And all the vegetables, everything in together. I'm just gonna put a little bit in my bowl here. Some vegetables. Oops. The table is clean. It's so refreshing. That noodle texture is unlike anything you've ever had. Even though technically it's mung bean starch and water, just like your regular dry glass noodles, the fact that it's fresh, it is just so much more tender and elastic. It is just like wiggles in your mouth. It is so cool. I mean, this whole process has been so cool from start to finish. The cooking of the noodles, the grating of it, the making it turning you know from white to clear again all the way to eating this has been just one very very cool experience i highly encourage you to give it a go and it's not just cool it's also tasty
So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. A special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who support the show directly. If you want to know what that's all about, how you can get direct access to me in our private Discord group, check out the link in the description below. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawatika.